Welcome to Harvesting Clouds, where we take a practical approach to learning and leveraging clouds. In this video, we'll take a look at how to create virtual machine skill sets in Microsoft Azure. Let's start by talking about what a virtual machine skill set is. As the name suggests, it's a set of virtual machines where your application is deployed identically on all the virtual machines in a particular skill set. Now, these virtual machines can scale out or scale in, that is increase in the number or decrease in the number depending upon various criteria. We'll be later talking about how you can define these criteria and how you can scale in and scale out dynamically in a virtual machine skill set in a subsequent video. For now, let's start by creating a virtual machine skill set. So here, I'm already logged into the Azure portal and to create a virtual machine skill set, I have two options. I can either click on create a resource button over here, or I can click on these three lines and then click on create a resource. Over here, I'll search for virtual machine skill set. The option that pops up or is displayed on as a dropdown, I'll click on that. Over here, you can look up the overview for virtual machine skill set. And then once you are ready to create, click on this particular button. It will open up the creation wizard for virtual machine skill set. There are various options, various pages that we need to go through. So let's get started. The first one is very basic. Just like with any resource, you need to provide the subscription and a resource group name. We'll create a new resource group for this one. Give it as much descriptive name as possible as per the naming convention that you have set up in your environment. Next, we give we will give a name to the virtual machine skill set that we are going to build. Let's say we are going to host an application that is consumed by finance department. So that's why I'm providing it name as virtual machine skill set VMSS finance app 01. Next, you select the geo region where this virtual machine skill set will be deployed. This should be closer to where you are living. So that's why I have selected East US region since I'm living in the East Coast region. If you are living in a different geo region or your company is operating out of a different geo region, you should ensure that where your customers are who are going to use the application hosted on this virtual machine skill set, you build this particular resource closer to that region. You can select availability zone to provide much higher availability. Virtual machine skill set out of the box provides you with very high availability. You can select the instance details. If you are hosting an app that can be hosted on a Linux server, you can select one of those images. Or if you want a Windows server image, you can select one of the Windows server images as well. You even have the option to create your own image and then deploy that image or build a virtual machine scale set from your custom image. Now the size for each and every VM, this is important. This is not the size for the whole virtual machine scale set. This is the size for every VM, every instance that is going to be created in the virtual machine scale set. You can change this option by clicking on change size and selecting an alternate size from here. For now, I'll cross out of this and leave it at default, that is D2S version three. For the authentication type, you can select an SSH key if you have one. For now, I'm going to use a password authentication. I'll provide a username as well as a password. For Linux, it is recommended that you leverage SSH public key. Now I'm done with the basic section, so I'll proceed next to the disk section. In here for each and every VM in my VM skill set, I can select this OS disk options, as well as I can create and attach new or existing data disks. So over here for the OS disk type, just like creating a normal virtual machine, I have three types. Over here also I have three types to select for the OS disk type. I can choose from the lowest cost, but also lowest performance, that is lowest IOPS, standard hard disk drive, or I can select from the medium category, medium performance, medium cost, standard SSD. For any business critical applications, you should always select premium SSD. It costs more, but provides you with higher performance, higher IOPS. 
I'll not create any data disk for this particular VM skill set and we'll proceed next to networking. Now, each and every virtual machine on this VM skill set may need to talk to another virtual machines or another resources on your network. So you will always assign a network to a virtual machine skill set. All the settings that you need to do, you can set up all those settings over here. You can either create a new virtual network or even select one of the existing ones. And then you can create a new NIC card. One will already be there for you. You can have multiple NIC card primary and secondary on each and every virtual machine if you want on the virtual machine skill set. Now the last option is to select an existing load balancer and put the virtual machines from this particular VM skill set into the backend pool of an existing load balancer. You don't need to do this if you have one already available that you want to leverage, only then you should configure this. Otherwise, all the VMs in a virtual machine skill set, they are by default load balanced. I'll keep the option at no and proceed to the next section for scaling. Now, this is the crux of whole virtual machine skill set. This is where you get the value when you select a custom scaling policy. Now here, what you are saying is that the initial instance count the initial number of VMs that will run in a virtual machine skill set is going to be two. And then you are defining minimum and maximum number of virtual machines that can run. The minimum is one and maximum is 10. Then you are defining something called scale out policy and scale in policy. The default one when you are creating the wizard is this particular policy based on the CPU threshold. But as we'll see in the subsequent video, you can define policies based on memory or network or various other criteria. So right now, let's see how the scaling out or scaling in occurs. By the way, scaling out means increasing the number of instances by X amount. Scaling in means reducing the number of instances that are running right now. So under scaling out, what we are saying is if the CPU threshold goes beyond 75 percentage in the last 10 minutes, then increase the number of VMs in the virtual machine skill set by one. And if the CPU threshold percentage decreases below 25 percent, then decrease the number of VMs in the virtual machine skill set by number one. You can configure all these settings. For example, instead of 75, we can set this value to 80. Instead of 25, we can increase the threshold to 30. If the CPU percentage will become below 30, then the number of VMs will be decreased. But at any time, at minimum, one VM will always be running or one instance will always be running. And at max, once it hits 10, it will not go beyond that. You will need to come back and change this number because cost is associated with the number of instances that will be running in your virtual machine skill set at any time. So now that we have configured the, these particular settings for scaling, the next settings are very easy. So I'll proceed to the next section that is for management. Over here, you are defining the upgrade policy for your each and every virtual machine in the VM skill set. You can leave it at default. That means you will go in manually and upgrade each and every instance that is running or you can select from automatic or rolling upgrades. You will select the boot diagnostic settings for the monitoring. You can select either to create a new storage account or select one of the existing ones. If you scroll down, there are settings to select the identity. You will select this only if your virtual machine is going to interact with other Azure services like Key Vault. For OS upgrades, I highly recommend that you disable this. You should be controlling the automatic, uh, the OS upgrades through your central system rather than the OS being upgraded automatically. Instance termination, if that happens when there is scaling in condition, then if you want to get notified, then you can select this option to on. Next up, we have health settings. If you want to monitor the health settings of the environment that is of your application running on each and every VM, then you can select that over here. By default, this setting is set to disable. You can enable and select either application health extension or load balancer probe. This will not direct the traffic to those nodes where the application health is not healthy. Next, under the advanced settings, we have the allocation policy. 
where if you want to enable the scaling beyond 100 instances, if you want that to happen, where you, wherein you can have max number of instances, more than 100 in your virtual machine scale set, you select yes over here. Spreading algorithm setting defines how the VMs in your VM scale set will be spread across different data centers. This ensures that if there is a power failure in one Microsoft domain, that is one Microsoft data center, then still some of the virtual machines in your VM scale set will still be up and running and thereby providing you with high availability. The next setting is for cloud init. For any Linux VM, you can customize the experience in the Linux for the first time when the VM boots up, it will run all the scripts that you define here. The next setting is for proximity placement group. Microsoft now has this concept where you can define that two virtual machines will be placed closer to each other physically in Microsoft data centers, thereby providing you with very low latency as far as the network communication is concerned. So you can leverage this feature by selecting a proximity placement group for all of your virtual machines in the VM skill set to reside in. You can select from generation one on generation two for the VM generation. As we discussed in one of the earlier videos, generation two provides a lot of new features, but if you don't need those features, don't select generation two, since generation two does not support some of the Azure platform features like disk encryption, as it states in the note here as well. So I'll leave the default to generation one and then move on to the next setting that is for tags. Tags are leveraged to categorize your resources. When you are doing some automation, you can leverage the tags to filter your resources. When you are pulling billing reports and that time as well, you can categorize your resources and look up the resources based on the tags that you provided. So for example, I'll provide the tag for cost center. Let's say this is the cost center for the department and I'll provide a department for this particular virtual machine scale set. Now later on when I'm pulling the report, I can filter for this particular department and see what is the expense that I need to charge back to that particular department. Finally, I'll go ahead and review all my settings. And then once I'm ready, once Microsoft Azure has passed the validation that all the settings that I selected are good, I'm ready to create the virtual machine skill set. All there is pending is for me to click the create button. Behind the scene, it will trigger the deployment and it will take me to this particular screen where I can see the status of the deployment. So I'll pause the video here. I'll come back once the deployment is successful. Now, after a few minutes, the deployment has completed. As you can see from the screen here, you can even click on the notifications icon and see that the deployment has succeeded. Now to navigate to the virtual machine scale set, you can either click on this particular button or you can navigate to all services and then under compute, click on virtual machine scale sets. Here, the virtual machine scale set that we just deployed is listed. We can click on it and then see that it is up and running right now. Under settings, you can even click on instances and you can see there are two instances as we configured that initially two instances should be up and running. So the two instances are running. These are the two actual virtual machines that are running behind the scene inside this virtual machine skill set. In the next video, we'll take a deeper look how to work with virtual machine skill set now that we have one created in our environment. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one.